Hi parents, it's Mrs. Yao. I wanted to give you a quick um, tutorial on how to use PowerSchool in case you're not familiar with that. Um, so I'm going to just give you a quick rundown. So um, first steps, the easiest way to get there is make sure you are not using the app. The app is not very user friendly and a lot of times it's very inaccurate and it gives you old grades from a quarter before instead of the current quarter. So I recommend that you always use the website um, version. So um, one of the easiest ways to get there is to go to the Cornerstone website, go under student info, scroll down to where you see parent and student info and click there. And then you're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says Power School Parent Portal. Click on that. And then you will enter your username and password. Um, this is specific to you. So if you don't have your setup yet, you will need to get with Jen Croat about that. Um, there is a link well not a link sorry there is a note in our weekly newsletter that comes home to you every week explaining all of that i'm not able to set any of that up for you and i am using my own personal children's um, power school site for this so if you will make sure you don't share their private information with anyone um, so first of all if you have more than one child like I have Blake and Carson. Make sure that you're clicking on the correct child that you're looking for so I can scroll back and forth between Blake's grades and Carson's grades. Um, I'm going to use Blake's because he's closer to elementary school. He's actually middle school, um, so it's a little closer to what our grades look like. Um, but if you have more than one child, you'll have all of them listed up at the top that you have added to your PowerSchool account. Um, so I am going to um, show you here. You can scroll down and you'll see all of the classes that your child is um, enrolled in. Now this is middle school, so they have a lot of classes. For us, you should just see three classes because um, we have just domain, ELA, and math. Um, and for each class, you're going to look at the current quarter that we're on. We're in quarter two now. Um, so you'll click on quarter two. To see what their final grade is right now, you will look at this average that you see. Um, if you want to see exactly what each of the grades are, for that class, then you're going to click on the actual grade. So I'm going to go to his ELA grade. Okay, and sometimes it takes a minute to load everything. Once you get here, you should be good to go and you can scroll down. It's going to have a lot of different stuff up top that really is not important for you to know or see. Um, and then you can scroll down and you can see every assignment that has been assigned and graded for the current quarter. It has the date listed on the side, has the type, uh, the category. So um, remember test projects and quizzes, as well as homework and classwork all have different weights. And don't pay attention to this for middle school because it's different for elementary school. Um, ours are categorized by test projects and quizzes, and then homework, and then classwork for second grade. So you can look at each of the individual assignments and look to see what the score is and the grade. In the middle here, beside each assignment, there will be a flag. Um, or a box for a flag. They may not necessarily have a code there if the assignment was turned in on time. Um, for instance, Blake was absent this day, so his teacher marked it as um, he was absent. I don't mark absences this way um, for us in power school. I just usually put a note about it and I can show you more on that in just a second. Um, so I'm going to see if I can click on one of his grades to see if I can find one that has an actual flag. So when you get to this part, 
don't worry about clicking the back button. Just go right back over here to where it says grades and attendance. Click on that and it will take you back to his list of all of his grades. So I'm actually going to go on his math grade because I think I saw some flags there earlier. Bear with me here for a second. Okay, so for example, this um, this flag right here, he is exempted because he was absent that day. Um, if you go down to the very bottom of the page, there's a legend that shows you what each of the different flags stand for. Um, the purple one with a slash through it is exempt from the final grade. I usually only use that if um, there's a special circumstance. For instance, maybe someone was pulled out to a special class while we were doing an assignment um, and they were not able to complete what we were doing and they missed the lesson. If that's the case, I would exempt them from that. Most of the time, the ones that you will see for our class are either going to be the red um, clock, which means something was turned in late, or the yellowish orange um, exclamation mark that means something is missing. That means it has not been turned in. Now remember for um, just my sanity and organization of power school and making things easier on me, if something is late and missing, I always mark it as a zero. So you will see a grade that says zero, but when they turn the assignment in, I go in power school and change that. Also, um, there is a speech bubble, a blue speech bubble. That means there's a comment beside it. So I don't think it shows up over here because if you look here, there's a comment here and there's no speech bubble. Um, if you go up to the top of this column, you'll see the little speech bubble to let you know that that does mean there is a comment. So for example, if I click here, his teacher, this was uh, and just a note that she wrote to help her saying that the shortcut code was JZD. I usually will write something there like, must be turned in by a certain date. Um, I might write the student was absent. Um, so that way I will remember that's why they haven't turned it in yet, not to count it late till after a certain amount of days. Um, I might write, um, it, I might write that if the student has a low grade on something that I'm allowing them to do corrections on, I might write something like, I gave the paper back for the student to correct on Monday. Um, and then usually if they've done corrections, I will uh, type down below that the previous grade was a 60 or 57, whatever the grade was before they did the corrections so that you can see that when they do the corrections, the grade did change. Um, so that you, um, anytime you see, I'm gonna click okay here, sorry. Anytime you see where it says view over here, that means there is a note and you can click on that to see what I wrote about it. Um, I think that pretty much covers most of the grading portion of it. Like I said, anytime you're in a grade, instead of clicking the back button, um, just go back to the top where it says navigation and click on grades and attendance. And then you can look at the different grades and you can click on each one of them. Um, also, another thing that you can do, you can look down at the bottom of Power School and see the different absences that your child has had. Um, Blake was out with the flu for a while, so he had four different absences. You can click on the number and it will list the different absences and it will um, give you a code for the absence. It also will have, um, should have tardies as well. So like 1A means they were out for illness or injury. 1B, they were out for a medical or a dental appointment. 1C, there was a death in the family. Um, and then there are just other different reasons depending on what you send me. Um, if you see something marked as 2A, that means it was an unexcused absent, meaning most of those kinds of things I have not been sent 
um, a note from you to say why they were absent. Um, sometimes if you do send me a note, um, like if you send me a note or an email, I will forward those to our attendance office, but sometimes missed communication happens. So if you ever see that happen, just check in with me and let me know. But the only way you'll know that is by making sure that you check on the attendance here. Um, a lot of this other stuff that's over here may not necessarily apply now. Like, I don't think you'll be able to see test results because that's mostly high school um, for like the SAT and, um, you know, things like the EOG and stuff like that, that students in second grade have not yet taken. Um, several of you have um, asked about how to get the um, parent reports sent to you. To do that, you click on email notification and it asks you what information would you like to receive. So for Blake and Carson, I have um, chosen that I want to have a summary of their current grade and attendance. I want to have a detailed report showing assignment scores for each of their classes. I want to have a detailed report of their attendance. Um, we won't have school announcements, and I don't think you have the balance alert, so because uh, that's for like lunch money and stuff like that, so you wouldn't have that. You'll list the email address that you want it sent to. You will um, choose your frequency of how often you want that sent. If it's never, don't even worry about filling all of this out. <laughs> Um, like I like to have a weekly report sent to me every Monday, so you would click that. If you want it more often, like if you want a daily report, you can click there. Um, if you want it just sent to you monthly, which hopefully you're checking in more often than that, um, or you could just have it sent to you every two weeks. Um, so I choose weekly, and then it says apply these settings to all your students. If you have more than one student, make sure you check that box. And if you want that sent right away to you, you can click send now for Blake and click submit. I will tell you that it has been very funny um, for the past two years. It's sent me quarter one like it's supposed to, but then when quarter two rolls around, it continues to send me quarter one. But then when we get to quarter three, it changes over. So I don't know if it's just something wonky with the whole power school system, but um, if you sign up and you're not getting the quarter two report right now, like you're supposed to be, and you just get the quarter one, during quarter three, it should switch over and start sending you the correct report. Um, but I have made this a little bit longer than I really need to. So if you have any questions, let me know because um, I think I just about covered everything. Um, but if you think of anything else that I um, might be able to help you with, please let me know. All right. Have a great night. Thanks.